on behalf of me and my family. But when death is touched that way, it is official that that sacrifice that the high priest will bring into the uh, to the burnt offering that will be out on behalf of the Santosa family. Why did the apostles did this? It's the official ordination to say that these men, God, you have chosen these men, and therefore, with this indication, that these men are the men that was that will be one of be the the core of the church that will be working together with the pastor together to do the will of God in the church. You know that's that's powerful when I thought about that. The same thing they do well, with the pastors and all that. I remember that uh, when on my ordination in 2000, in February 2000, I was at Winter Haven Baptist Church. And I had the privilege to have one of my professors from Bible College, Pastor uh, Dr. Eli Haru. I have one of the missionaries, uh, two missionaries actually were there. Uh, the Hobbing was there and also Brother Dan Lieber, who was my pastor back in the Rep uh, West Republic. And now he's missionary in Belize. And I had uh, Pastor Hodges, of course, and I had uh, Pastor Bill Bells, who also trained me in the years. So I got so many pastors that were in there. And when they ordained me to be in the ministry, in the ministry of, the, of the gospel, they lay, each one of them lay hands on me and pray for me. And they are, of course, they already know me for years, you know. But it was a special moment to know this, that I've been acknowledged, not just by God, but a testimony of this man, of God's man, that for me to carry on the work of the ministry in the church, you know, and to whatever God has in store for me. At that time, you know, I didn't know that I was going to be in New Zealand. I thought I was going to go back to Indonesia. And here it is. God revealed to me. The last thing is the outcome. After the ordinations, after the men were chosen, look at what the outcome of this in verse 7 in closing. The Bible says, And the word, the word of God spread. And the number of disciples, not just the attenders, disciples multiply. You know, before that, they said the number will multiply. But they did not say anything about disciples. But now the number of disciples multiply. What is that difference? Now, the apostles were able to rise up more, train and to equip more disciples, people that are equipped for the work of the ministry. And look at what happened after that. It says, multiply, multiply greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. There was a great revival took place there when the deacons, godly man, have been called and chosen to take that position. Let me just be honest with you guys, you know. In the last seven years or more, I'm almost eight years, you know, I, I know church planting is not easy. I can tell you that. You know, I remember after my after our first year, our second year, we went through a big bump. That was so easy for me to just throw my towel down and enough. You know, I had the biggest challenge in that time. It's really hard. Not just for me, but for Amy. We are, we pray about that and we say like, you know, God, it is just your work, and that's what we do. We just point the focus on those who are faithful. Are we always faithful in teaching of the Word of God? You know, we don't have much programs. We don't have to do, you know, this kind of program, this kind of games, and all that kind of stuff. Our focus is just teaching of the Word of God. And I remember, in those days, we have two Bible studies. You know, the one we started at Tita Elvi's house, and then birth to two. After that, we have three classes, and then four classes. I was teaching all those four nights. I remember four nights of the day of a week. I didn't go home usually until almost 11 o'clock at night. You know, teaching, you know, teaching. And in the morning we have classes. I used to teach in the universities, you know, twice a week. And then teaching in the evenings, four days a week. And then as the time goes on, and then seeing people coming to know the Lord, and not just come to know the Lord and baptize, but these people were developing into spiritual leaders. And I praise the Lord for that. And God rise up more of men. And we, today we have uh, at least three men, you know, that are teaching the Word. And that we have two in the, the trainings and now more men also behind them. So praise the Lord for that. 
But one thing has been a dilemma for me. You know, and you know me, you know. Uh, you know how many times I've come to your houses, visit you. I've done so many different counselings in your homes. Because I believe that's important. My goal as a pastor is to shepherd you, to guide you into the truth of God, to live your life, to have a married, a godly marriage, godly parenting and all of that. As I look back in there, I'll never regret any moment of it. But one thing I notice, I'm only one. One person. And you know, through the years, every time we have all this study, remember you guys? I said, remember, keep all these lessons. Because you're going to teach others one day. My desire, my vision is to see that we're multiplying, not because of the church program, it's not because we have, you know, a big slide going on outside that people are coming, but because we have more people that are more disciples of Jesus Christ. Ladies, yes, you cannot teach men, like the Bible says, but you still can teach ladies and children. Don't discount our children. Those are God's peoples as well, can be from the young one. And listen to this. It had come to the point last year, as I was speaking with my pastor, talking to uh, other pastors in here, my, pa uh, my friend, Pastor Cliff, and all that. And then they said, like, I think this is the time for you, IBC Central, to really prayfully, to seek from among you, godly men, good reputations, men who are full with the Holy Spirit, and men who is also will have full of wisdom, God's wisdom. And as I pray about this since last year, I know that there are men in here that God has called to this position. Now I know it's humbling to, to be in a place to serve the living God, just for what I do. Guys, let me tell you this, I'm not a superman. I'm just a servant of God. But when I give my life completely to the Lord to do whatever God wants to do, He has done great mighty things in my life and through my life. Not because of me, but because of Him. And I believe in all my heart that God still wants to do the same business with many of you here. Or actually with all of you. And so, next week, next Sunday, I'm going to bring up the second part of this message on what does that mean, the qualification, what does it require of deacons. And it's important for you to be here and to listen to that and even for the wives and for the ladies. If you're not married yet or if your husband is not here, you pray for them. If you're not married yet, pray for that man that one day you're going to marry because that man has got to be a man of God and that man is going to rise up to the occasion. In conclusion of this, church, listen to this. Back in Matthew chapter 20, if you would please. In Matthew 20, the Lord Jesus Christ said this. Whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man, our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. If you're here today, you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You do not have a relationship with him. Listen to that word. It is just the word of the Lord Jesus Christ says that he came not to be served, but to serve. He has served you. And gave his life for a ransom. To die for you. That's who our Lord Jesus Christ. Christians, let's not be less than what our Lord Jesus Christ has revealed to us today. At least we got to be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. At least. More than that, serve one another. This is us Christians, all of us. True Christians always evidence in their service, first and most of all for God, second for one another. 
and that's who Christians are because that's who our Lord Jesus Christ is. Amen? Church, if you will bow your heads in the attitude of prayer. <clears throat> Christians, whatever that God has spoken to you in your heart today, man, if God was speaking to you in this regard of deacons, pray. Pray to say, God, it's all going to be about you. My goal is to be servant, servant of the Almighty God. Christians, you're here. Remember, you're not here to be served, but to serve as our Lord Jesus Christ was and is. If you're here and you're Christians, you've been born again, but you're not serving the Lord, I'm not talking about you know singing, preaching, but anything to do so, anything. As the song that we sang earlier, will give you everything to tell of your story to the ends of the earth. That should be our attitude. That should be us Christians. Whatever it takes to serve, to serve God in His church, to serve God in His home, in your homes. In your communities, everywhere. My heart goes up for you here today who do not know you, who do not know Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ yet. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, here once again, He has served you. And He has died for you. All you need to do is to realize of your sin that you have offended God by living independently from God. And then now you want to say, I want to turn away from my sin. I want to turn my life to you, Lord. I want to live for you, God, in Jesus Christ. Would you please accept me to be your child, to be your people? If that's your desire today, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, why don't you pray with me this morning to express your heart desire? Is there anyone here today, today, on this date, to say, today I want to die to my sins. I want to turn away from my sins and I want to turn my life to God to live for Him now and for always. To serve Him and to know him more. Anyone like that today? Would you please just put your hands up. Say, Pastor, would you please pray for me? Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Anyone else? God knows your heart. You cannot hide from God. Because one of these days you're going to stand before God. Either to, even, even even today, it could be tonight or any time. Life is like a vapor, the Bible says. Here today and gone tomorrow. Can you for sure know that if you stand before God today, that you're going to say, God will say, Welcome to my house? Or would you still have doubt in your heart? Say, I don't know if I if Jesus will recognize me as his. But you desire to know him today. Anyone else? Would you please put your hands up as a testimony of your heart? Pray for me. I want to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone else? Two souls so far. Raise their hands there are still. Anyone else? Christians, would you join your heart with me in prayer? Our Father God in heaven. I'm humbled by your presence. I'm humbled by your word today. Truly that your word is a living word. It penetrates to my mind and my heart. And I know it's done to say to others here today. God, I have no doubt there are some here of your people 
Christians who was repenting of their sins, who had not been really serving you as they should, to live their lives still and doing other things but not you, Lord. I pray, God, I pray that they will realize that this is the nature, the nature of Christians to serve because you are the God who serves. And Lord God, I pray as we been praying, asking for you to direct our path, our church, in regards to looking for the office of deacon. Lord, uh, even though I have some ideas in my mind, but God, I want your will to be done, not my will. I would like for your will to be done in this church as it is in heaven. I pray that you guide your church to have a pure heart and a pure mind toward you and your church. And as we look upon this, Lord, we're looking for your will to be done, that your glory be revealed even more in this church. Lord, as we see that in your word, when the deacon has been selected, your disciples multiply greatly. Souls being sold out to you more for your glory. God, that's what I desire, that's what we desire today. Father God, I also want to pray for the two souls, two hands, two hearts that have been raised up to you this morning. For they say with their testimony of the hands that today they desire to turn away from their sins, to turn away from living independently from you, and to turn their lives to you. To submit their life to you. For you to be their personal Lord and Savior. God, I pray that you seal their hearts by your Spirit. That today is the day when they will be born again in Jesus Christ. At the moment of their confession of faith. God, I know that you will take residence in their lives. But I pray for your will to be done. Because you know the hearts of the young man. For I do not know. But you know that. I pray that these individuals will rise up and to testify truly that today they have come to know you as the Lord of